Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Friday. Just two days away now from Arsenal taking on Watford in the Premier League at Vicarage Road. I'll be at that game, looking forward to it, fingers crossed. Big, big match for Arsenal. We've just been speaking to Mikel Arteta at his press conference ahead of the game on Sunday. So I thought I'd pop on here, talk a little bit about some of the key points to come from that press conference there's a few things team news wise he has some good things to say about Ben White Thomas Partey um, improving a relationship with Watford they obviously just over the fence at London Colney literally if you don't didn't know they are the two clubs training grounds literally separated by a fence they're right next to each other um, so he talks a little bit about that um, amongst other things I just, I just heard the news about Shane Warne um, I mean, look, it's cricket. I know this is an Arsenal channel. This is about an Arsenal press conference. But I just can't, I, honestly, I can't get my head around the Shane Warne news. Absolutely devastating news out. I mean, what an absolute legend. Not just a cricket, but sport. He's one of the greatest sportsmen of my generation, of any generation. 52 years old. It's just so, so sad. I mean, as an England fan, I mean, that man did so much damage to us. Every time they threw the ball to him, just the panic stations, just because he knew what was going to happen, because he was that good, that much of a difference maker for Australia. And I know at the moment, me recording this video, Australia, and it's the middle of the night over there, and that country will be waking up in morning and when they hear the news. It's just so, so sad. 52. I saw him tweeting yesterday, and I oh, can't get my head around it. It just shows the fragility of life and everything, not to get too, uh, go too deep or anything, but yeah, really horrible sad news about Shane Warne what an absolute legend rest in peace Shane um, right back to Arsenal matters um, we'll start with team news I mean that's always a big thing ahead of the game this is what Mikel Arteta has just been saying it's press conference he says we're in the same place as last week we still have a doubt over Tommy Asu uh, the rest I think they are in a good place so um, not much new from him there we have kind of knew that already um, whether he's keeping anything under wraps we don't know I mean we thought last week ahead of the game against Wolves that there was no issues and then suddenly Tommy Asu was injured again. Um, so he obviously managers keep things close to their chest. They don't want to give too much away uh, to rival managers. But if you're taking what Mikel says on face value there, then it just looks like Tommy Asu might, might be the only player missing um, for the game. And you just think Cedric slots straight in a red, right back where he's been playing very, very well in Tommy Asu's absence. Some news from Watford is that Ismail Assar looks like he's out with a hamstring injury. Um, Mikel was asked about that and he said he's been a big threat for them, that's for sure, but I think they have other qualities, other strength that they can cause us problems with. I'm expecting it to be a really difficult game. I mean, you can't and you can't overstate how big this game is for Arsenal. They've got some really tricky matches coming up soon. You know, Villa away in a couple of weeks, Liverpool at home, Tottenham away at some point, Chelsea away at some point, Man United at home. I mean, some really tricky games here. Um, they can't afford to slip up at Watford. I mean, Watford is going to be tricky. Every game in the Premier League is tricky. And Watford, uh, to avoid the cliche, obviously fighting for their lives, relegation threatened, um, are going to be very much up for it and under Roy Hodgson you know what you're going to get from a Roy Hodgson side I mean Mikel was speaking very glowingly about Roy Hodgson um, and you know what you're going to get against Hodgson's side they're going to try and keep things tight they're going to try and stay in shape they're going to make things difficult and you're just going to have to break them down if you can break them down then hopefully that will open up and you could end up going on and getting quite a comfortable win Crystal Palace did it fairly recently against them I think it was 4-1 wasn't it they got a couple of late goals that maybe skewed the scoreline a little bit but they eventually got the breakthrough and then they went on and won it comfortably. But if you don't, then it could end up being like Aston Villa, who lost at home to Watford a couple of weeks ago because Watford kept things tight. They stayed in it and then they do have some quality going forward. We've seen the goals that Dennis has scored um, this season for them. I mean, losing Saar is obviously a big thing for them, certainly on the counter-attack. And he's caused Arsenal problems before. So that is, you know, it's a big blow for, for Watford. And I'm sure Mikel, although he's trying to keep you know, he's saying some nice things there. I'm sure Mikel will be very happy that Saar won't be playing for Watford. So that's the big sort of team news coming out of Arsenal and Watford. A little bit mixed. Arsenal not too bad. Watford suffering quite a big blow with that uh, Ismail Saar injury. Elsewhere in the press conference, I wrote a piece today actually this morning that I put out about Ben White and the season he's had and how he's kind of bounced back from that opening day against Brentford and how when... When Arsenal signed him, all the talk was about Varane, Varane, wasn't it? It was like, how have Arsenal spent £50 million on Ben White when Man United have got Varane for 40 or whatever it, whatever it was? I mean, it was going on for ages, wasn't it? Um, everyone comparing William Gallas, I remember 
having a go, saying he couldn't understand what Arsenal were doing, and again, comparing it to Ben White. And I wrote a piece that's gone live, I've put it on my socials today, so have a read of it if you haven't already. Um, looking at the season Ben White's had, how he sort of coped with that scrutiny of the price tag and everything like that. And Mikel was actually asked about Ben today, um, and he said he's had a brilliant season, how quickly he's adapted, how quickly he's been able to handle the pressure with the number he is wearing, the price we have paid, he's been great. Obviously, he's wearing the number four shirt at Arsenal, which is a fairly significant shirt, um, certainly in the modern era when you think of Patrick Vieira. So you sort of taking on the number four shirt, you're immediately going to have that, sort of be just be known for that number, the Patrick Vieira number. Um, and, you know, I, I think Ben White's been great. I, I spoke about it yesterday, I was talking about um, who my player of the season would be if the season ended now or you had to vote for it now, who would your Arsenal player of the season be? And I said it'd either be Ramsdale, uh, Smith Rowe or Gabriel. And I, I stick with that, but I do think Ben White is very, very close to being in there. I love watching Ben White and it, I think his potential is absolutely frightening. And you think this is only his second season in the Premier League. He's never, He's not even had two full seasons at this level yet. He's still young. Potential-wise, he's absolutely frightening the way he's playing already. He's just going to get better and better as he gets older. He's the exact sort of player that you can. That Mikel Arteta loves. You know, he's comfortable with the ball and speak. Technically, he's good. He's brave. He doesn't mind coming out uh, with the ball and you know, sp- sort of breaking the lines. I mean, that's a big reason why Arsenal signed him. And um, yeah, I think he's been great, Ben White. And I'm not surprised Mikel has been is saying those sort of things about him because he's clearly very, very happy. And I know a lot of bi- whenever you. Whenever you talk about Ben White, then other people will sort of throw back, well, what about Saliba? What's going to happen with Saliba? And, you know, it's a nice <laughs> it's a nice problem to have, isn't it? And also, you look at the top top clubs in the world, they all have three or four top centre-backs. Just because Ben White and Gabriel are firmly established as Arsenal's first-choice centre-backs right now, it doesn't mean that there's no way in for Saliba. All these top clubs have, have to look at Manchester City, Stones, Diaz, um, someone else who I've totally forgotten who their other centre-backs are at the moment but it's more than three isn't it it's more than two isn't it you look at Liverpool with Canate, Matip, Van Dijk you know all these all these players um, all these clubs have got more than two good centre-backs so there's no reason that just because Arsenal have got Gabriel and Ben White it means it's the end for William Saliba far from it um, you know I, don't, I very much hope that William Saliba comes back and can compete with those two and if he gets his chance, he comes in, he keeps one of the other two out, and that's just how squads improve. You need decent players. So I don't think just because Ben White and Gabriel are playing well, that means the end for William Saliba, far from it. Um, he also had some th- good things to say about Thomas Party. He was asked about Thomas Party's impressive form. He said uh, that the fact he's been injury-free is a massive thing. He's probably more fit now as well because he's doing some things better. I mean, the injury-free thing, we know that is just huge. Thomas Partey, ever since he's arrived, he's just been hit by injury after injury after injury. He's never been able to get any sort of rhythm going for Arsenal. But that, at the moment, touch wood, is happening. He's playing regularly, he's fit. I was worried when he went off to AFCON that something was going to happen, because just before AFCON, he was beginning to play really, really well. He had that monstrous performance against Manchester City. And then it was like, oh no, he's going off to Afghan, he'll get an injury, he'll come back, he won't be fit. But he's come back and he's hit the ground running and he's looking sharp. Thought he was excellent against Wolves last time out. And um, and yeah, Mikel, no wonder he sounds good. He was asked about his shooting. So what about his shooting? So, uh, is he practicing that? And Mikel said, he is practicing some of the goals he scores in training. You would be amazed. You won't believe me probably. So he'll have to start doing that. <laughs> he'll, so we have to see him. So I'm going to get this right. You won't believe me, probably. So we have to see one of those soon go into the net. I think the Emirates is going to explode when Thomas Party finally pings one into the top corner, um, and he can score goals. Isn't that? You watch him in the warm-ups when he's doing shooting practice. He's constantly scoring and picking out the top corner. He does it for Ghana. His goal scoring record for Ghana is great. He scored a fair few for Atletico, not loads, but he scored a few for Atletico. It's really bizarre, kind of what's happened to him in front of goal when it comes to Arsenal and. Um, you know, he's just been so, so wayward, hasn't he? It's becoming a bit of a running joke now, isn't it? But Mikel, as he's saying there, he's scoring him in training. I'm sure once he, once one of those long-range efforts from Thomas Party goes in, I guarantee he'll get a few more and they'll, they'll start to follow. It's just this big thing that's been built up and built up now and I'm convinced when he gets one, he'll go on and score a fair few more. Uh, so just quickly on the improving relationship with Watford, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, he kind of mentioned it and he said that Edu would be leading it and trying to sort of build up the working relationship between the two clubs and he was asked well, what does that mean he said well it depends at least 
open the relationship and explore possibilities that we have with our players, with their players. They are next door and we compete against each other. But as well, I think it's important to have a good relation. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly what he means there, but it is quite interesting. It's like when he talks about their players and our players, would that be some, could you have open up some sort of loan avenue, I don't know, or just behind the scenes games more regularly? Uh, who knows? But it does kind of make sense when you've got two Premier League clubs literally right next to each other in terms of training ground to improve the relationship a little bit more and it seems like certainly from what Arteta is saying that that's something that he is keen to do uh, a couple other things from the press conference he was asked about the PGMOL which is obviously the professional referees um, association type thing and they have contacted Frank Lampard didn't they after the Manchester City game Manchester City Everton game at the weekend when City were somehow not given a penalty for handball and straight away Mike Riley rang him up and apologised to Lampard and blah 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 and um, Mikel was asked about that and uh, whether he'd received anything yet and uh, he said no no phone calls from him obviously there are talks planned between the PGMOL and Arsenal over decisions that have gone against Arsenal this season. Mikel Arteta has gone on record and saying he wanted to have those conversations. It does look like those conversations are going to be taking place now. Um, and he says, as is anyone's apologised to you? He said, we are always in touch with them. It's great because after the match, we can all be honest and get the replies you want, but we cannot affect the game. I'm not sure really what that meant. Um, but yeah, I think we'll all want to see. But we'll be interested to hear once these conversations do happen exactly what was said. And that's about it, really, from the press conference today. Though they, they were the main um, kind of headlines from what we saw. Nothing too groundbreaking. Um, and fingers crossed that the team news that Mikel was talking about rings true and stays true. And Arsenal do just go to that Watford game without Tommy Asu. I can't. I know he called him a doubt, but I can't imagine he's going to play. I'd be very, very surprised, even if he does. Even if he has started training, which we don't know yet. If he has started training towards the end of the week, I'd be very surprised if you throw him straight back in. Um, you just need to, as I've been saying constantly it feels like constantly with him you've got to sort of ease him back in and they were doing that before he had this setback with the other calf injury and I'm sure they'll do it again once he is fit and as I said Cedric's been playing so well recently it's not a major issue although Watford you know they are quite a big tall physical side they'll certainly look to take advantage from set pieces that sort of thing I think we saw Musa Sissoko score from a set piece for them last time uh last time out I think they lost last weekend I can't remember who it was too but he, he scored a scored a header didn't he um, and they'll, pro they'll probably look to take advantage of that again and Tommy Asu would have definitely helped with that such as his aerial ability but let's hope Cedric can deal with it and the other players can deal with it as well I will come back on tomorrow if I can it's Saturday morning depends if my uh, kids let me have 15 minutes or so free in the morning to come on and do a video but I will try um, to sort of look further ahead to that Watford game do my predicted 11 that sort of thing so do keep your eyes peeled for that if I don't manage it I apologize uh, but I will be at Vicarage Road on Sunday and so keep your eyes peeled for the usual pre-match and post-match stuff thank you for watching everyone have a very good Friday evening wherever you are and uh, yeah enjoy your weekend speak to you soon